I've managed, first try, to draw a sort of a disgruntled looking cyclops. I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for 40 years. I'm gonna test some cheese gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. Maybe a lever that comes out here. Stagger these blades. This is how guillotines are designed. These are the products I'm going to test. Rotary cheese grater. Fondue cheese gun. Slice the cheese slicer. Handheld cheese mill. Adjustable grater slicer. Rotary cheese grater. It is designed to grate cheese with a turn of a crank. Let's see how effective it is. I've got the medium grate attachment in place. I will first suction it down, which is gonna be important when I start cranking. Let's see if we can get started. And wow, it's going through this really quickly. Okay, so that felt pretty quick and I think I annihilated that piece of cheese. Here's a slightly bigger piece of cheese. This cheese doesn't stand a chance. It is grated and grated pretty quickly. Boy, I would say that worked pretty well. That was great. Get it? Let's see how the rotary grater compares to a standard box grater. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the rotary cheese grater a five out of five. It's really fast, it gets through the cheese really quickly, it's very consistent, I am loving it. Now I'm gonna try the left hand oil test. By making my non-dominant hand slippery, it's gonna highlight any deficiencies. And I read those comments. Get your mind out of the gutter. Now the first thing that needs to be done is I need to lock this to the table. I'm gonna turn it towards me so I can get my left hand on it. You may not be able to see this, but because of the shape and because everything's rounded, my slippery hand is falling off of here. I'm not getting any good grab on this which means to compensate, I'm really squeezing the hell out of this to hold it steady. With my left hand, I've got to spin the other way. No problem, and this is going through pretty quickly. Let's try it now with the plunger. And yeah, uh-oh, my suction cup let go. Oh yeah, this could be a bit of a problem, and this depends on the countertop that you have. It took a little bit of work, but still, I think I'm a happy camper. In terms of usability, I would give this a five out of five has a couple of things that I think could be improved, but I am willing to forgive it. Let's talk about a redesign. Even though I like it, I think there are things that can be improved. So this knob looks like this. It takes some force to get this suction to the table. I would rethink this and probably give this a lever action. The other thing I would think about for the suction cup is make the flange just a little bit wider. And I'm thinking that may help it stick to the countertop a little better. In doing that, it may actually suction to the table a little more effectively. The way this handle is designed now, it forces you into this position, which can put your wrist at an angle and may not be as friendly ergonomically if your hand was on the edge here, if there was a ball to grab or a mushroom shape. That way, you would keep your hand in a neutral position as you spin. I think that would be an improvement. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the rotary cheese grater a five out of five. I am loving it. I love you because of your speed and your ease of use and your ability to give me a lot of cheese very quickly. Fond doodler cheese gun. It's basically a hot glue gun for cheese. Let's see how effective it is. The inside piece is a tube. This tube is gonna get filled with cheese. As it's melting, it's gonna get pushed out the tip. I'm gonna turn this into a glue stick size rectangle. Squeeze it down. I'm going to assemble it into the gun. As the cheese is heating in here, it's expanding a bit, so little bits are dribbling out. Our canvas today is gonna be a bowl of taco chips. Okay, let's give it a try. It is rather melted. It's not a smooth output of cheese. It really is click by click. Give it two eyes. Ooh, the eye isn't quite working. I've managed, first try, to draw a sort of a disgruntled looking cyclops. It tastes fine. It just wasn't the amazingly beautiful piece of artwork I expected. But we'll give it another try. It really is coming out rather unevenly. It's not like a continuous flow. Boy, I think this needs to be a slow process because as the new cheese gets into the heated tip, uh, it is not yet melted, and you can see it's coming out as a chunky version of melted cheese. Let's see how it compares to using a microwaved cup of Velveeta. In 
terms of effectiveness on a one to five scale, I would give this a one. I don't think my artistic visions have been fulfilled. It's time for the left hand oil test. I am going to try a spiral again. It's gonna be my trademark in the art world. Boy, the problem is it's good for the first squeeze because the cheese is melted, but as you go along, it's just getting to be chunky in consistency. I'm getting some leakage inside the tube, not having a wonderful experience this time out. I will say that my left hand being slippery, it does highlight the fact that this is a bit out of control, especially as I'm pumping. I'm a little less coordinated with my left hand, and as I pump, I can feel the nozzle just being a bit out of control. I guess I could use two hands to do this, and probably if I wanted to be accurate, I would. But that doesn't solve the problem of uh, the fact that the cheese just doesn't want to flow. I'm not sure I'm really proud of my final artwork, but here it is. I know this may not look like much, but we are willing to sell this segment of the video as an NFT for $60 million. In terms of usability, I would give the Fun Doodle a one out of five. I don't think you're gonna be happy with it. It's just not a smooth working tool. Let's see how I would redesign this. For one thing, I think we need to melt more cheese. Right now, the part that gets hot is this metal tip. It's kind of small, it's also kind of lightweight. I would extend this so that the heated area extends, boy, at least halfway up this tube. You're gonna to wanna to have a lot of melted cheese if you're gonna draw any sort of shape. And also, I would probably consider, instead of a round shape to this tube, I would consider a rectangular shape. That would do a couple of things. One, a rectangular shape would automatically align the slot so that it's horizontal. But maybe even more importantly, the flat surface of a rectangle is gonna heat up more effectively than a round shape. That being said, this is still a ratchet. Every time I pump, it indexes which means the cheese is not flowing out continuously, it's flowing out in spurts. I don't have a good way to solve that yet because this is a pretty simple mechanism. What I would do though is consider a couple of shape options for the handle and for the trigger itself. So for the handle, as I'm pumping, I can feel the tip wavering. So it's a little hard to control. Making this back part flat, I think would offer a lot more control. For the trigger itself, the pivot point is, boy, way up here, which means my index finger is not doing as much work as it could. Move the pivot point up here and have the handle be longer so that I can get three fingers in here. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the Fun Doodler a one out of five. Even if you have any expectations at all, I think you're gonna be disappointed. For all you cheese artists out there, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm not sure the fondue is gonna make you shine. Slicer, cheese slicer. Its purpose in life is to slice cheese in one downward motion. Let's see how effective it is. The slicer cheese slicer does have a thickness control and I think I will just set it to a medium thickness to give it a test. I'm gonna push the bar up against the edge of the cheese and push. I've got a piece of cheese stuck in here. Let's see how I can release that easily. And it's okay, actually, it's a little bit thicker on the top than it is on the bottom. I'm gonna do a few in a row. It's taking a bit of pressure because I am cutting the entire width of the cheese as opposed to if I was doing it with a knife, I'd probably angle the knife. And let's see what we ended up with. The other slices were relatively even. The first one I did was a little off. It was okay, it sliced the cheese. I didn't feel the magic coming out of it. Not very impressive. Let's see how the slice the cheese slicer compares with a good old kitchen knife. It tastes very evenly sliced. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the slice the cheese slicer a two, probably no better than that. I don't think it's really any more effective than a standard old kitchen knife. Let's test its usability. I'm gonna try this again, and I'm gonna make my non-dominant hand a little slippery. Let's see how I'm doing. Oh, I really slipped forward at that. Because again, it takes quite a bit of force now. It takes some pressure to push down because you're slicing the entire width of cheese at the same time. You may not be able to see this, but I really am putting a lot of force into this, especially as I'm into slice eight or nine or 10 here. I'm feeling that it is taking more force than a knife would do. I think the issue is to really be effective, you need to keep this vertical and that is not as easy to do with 
a whole lot of pressure. It's okay, not loving it. In terms of usability, I would give this a two out of five. It's just gonna be too difficult to use for too many people. Let's think about how I would redesign this. It's got some inherent problems. I would see if there's a way to angle the blade this way so that this part starts cutting first. Once this bottoms out, this part will catch up. This is how guillotines are designed, so that's my inspiration. The blade goes across your neck, not just straight down. The blade has these holes in it that's giving it sort of a Swiss cheese look, but the function of that is it keeps the cheese from sticking because there's not as much surface area for the cheese to stick to once that slice is made. There's no good way that I can think of to keep this straight or steady. I would wonder if we actually want this to stay on the ground. I wonder if this would sit stable on the table and uh, the blade would start up here so that it's above that brick of cheese. Some of the improvements we're talking about here remind me of the bagel guillotine gadget that we looked at in the breakfast episode. In terms of a buy rating, I would give this a two out of five. I don't think this is all that it's cut out to be. I know you love dad jokes. Handheld cheese mill. Its purpose in life is to grate cheese using a twisting motion, kind of like a pepper mill. Let's see how effective it is. I have some Parmesan cheese here. I have a bowl of pasta just waiting for some grated cheese. First thing I need to do is load up the mill, put the plunger back in place, and let's give it a go. So it's coming out. It's a little on the slow side, but I think that's because of the way that the cheese was in there. It's really a wedge of cheese, so I'm probably only grating a very thin part of that cheese. And here is, in case you're interested, a shred of plastic, in case you want to add that to your pasta. It is somehow not just grating the cheese, it's grating some of itself. Doesn't sound that good, it sounds a little cheap, but it's doing its job. I usually put a lot of cheese on pasta because I like it, and I would say I would stop right around there. My first impression is that it's a little too plasticky. It doesn't feel like a super high quality product. I have pepper mills that are really nice. This is not that same level. Let's see how the handheld cheese mill compares to a microplane grater. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the handheld cheese mill a two out of five. It does not grate nearly as well as the handheld grater, so I think you have better alternatives out there. Time for the left hand oil test. See, it's grating, but not very much with every throw. I feel like I'm doing a lot of movement for not a whole lot of grating. And because of the way it's shaped, I feel like it's gonna be doing that a lot. Whoa, look at this. I think at this point, I would just grab a more traditional cheese grater. In terms of usability, I would give this a two out of five, just not getting the output that I would want. Let's talk about a redesign. Boy, this has been the case with a lot of products that we see is that they are just round and smooth and there is nothing really to keep your hand on it. So I would do something to counteract that. I would add some sort of detents or grooves or indents here or something so that as one hand is spinning, my other hand is pinching it, that I really have something to pinch into. In terms of this top piece, I would consider, boy, more of a crank handle, maybe a lever that comes out here with a ball on it pepper mills do this as well, because then what the action would be, once I have a good grip, I can actually go through a rotary motion here. As I was grating the cheese, little bits of plastic were coming out. I can kind of feel a little bit of grinding, but also I could see little shreds of plastic come out. Any improvements you make in terms of usability don't mean much if you're gonna be grinding plastic instead of grating cheese. Just make, 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 make sure that the blades and the plastic don't start interacting with each other. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the handheld cheese mill a two out of five. It's good for people who don't like that much cheese. You look okay, you just need to work harder. Adjustable grater slicer. This is a multifunction tool designed to both slice and grate cheese. Let's see how effective it is. I'm gonna start by slicing this block of Monterey Jack cheese. This tool has an adjustment here that would vary the thickness. Let's try in a medium position. I will start at one end, pull across, keep my hand away from the blade, and that worked okay, with the exception that I started to grate some of the cheese as well. Depending on the angle, 
of my hands, I am doing those multi functions at once. I am grating and slicing at the same time. See if I can prevent that. So I'm gonna keep the grating blades high that prevents it from grating at the same time. I'm gonna try this again, but this time using the grater. Something very interesting is happening here, and it's a fault that I actually see with a lot of, of cheese graters. When the blades are perfectly aligned, what you end up with are grooves in the cheese where you could have used that same action to cut twice as many shreds. So if they were offset, this would be a much more effective tool. And as I come across, I am slicing with the first blade, but not with the second row of blades. So it's a lovely cheese pattern maker, but it's a lost opportunity as a cheese grater. There is one other function on this tool. It does have a blade edge on the front, so you can use it to cut slices that way. So let's see how the adjustable grater slicer compares to a regular cheese grater and a regular kitchen knife. In terms of effectiveness, I would give this a two. The grater is just really unusable. There's no sense buying a multi-function tool if one of the functions is completely useless. It is left-hand oil test time. The control for adjusting the slice is really kind of fussy. You gotta push and twist at the same time. But I'm going to open this to some sort of medium sized slice. I can see right away that because my hand's a little less coordinated, positioning this is a little trickier than it would be with my other hand. That already gives me some thoughts for improvement. You know, it works okay. This is a little more awkward than using my right hand. And let's try grating. To no surprise, the same issue. What I'm doing is grooving the cheese, but not really getting all of the grated parts out of it that I otherwise would if these blades were in a better position. My left hand is highlighting the fact that it is really a lot of work to get just a little bit of grated cheese from this tool. In terms of usability, I would give this a two out of five. It requires a whole lot of effort for not that much output. Let's think about a redesign, and there are definitely a couple of things that I would do with this puppy. As mentioned, lining up the blades makes no sense. It's kind of like sitting in a stadium and having every seat perfectly lined up. You don't want to do that. You want to stagger the seats. Kind of the same thing here. What you want to do is stagger these blades so that you have as much cutting power as possible. What they have here instead is they have rows and columns. They're not staggered at all. So this blade is going to try to cut the same thing that this blade just cut. That makes no sense. If this was just over even just a little bit, it would start cutting a new row of cheese. The other thing I would look at is try to make these blades wider as possible. A traditional cheese grater has, you know, curves like that. I would create more of a landing area. What you want to do when you start slicing is have the cheese sit on top of this bar. And the easiest way to do that, or a way to make that easier, is not make this bar so small. Right now, the bar looks like this, and what I would do is make that bar look like this. Really extend this, so it's gonna be very easy to place the cheese at the proper position. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the adjustable grater slicer a one out of five. If you're gonna make a multi-function tool, both functions better work really well. I'm sorry, but I only half love you. Cheese has been around for a very long time. We've been eating it for centuries and centuries. If you're gonna come up with a new cheese gadget, it better be good. Even out of these five, boy, only one of them was stellar in my opinion. There's a lot of things you can do with cheese. You can slice it, you can grate it, you can draw with it. I just wish some of that creativity led to better executions.